Hello world. This is the result of a capstone project at uh, Louisiana Tech University. My name is Richard Wolf, and uh, my partners were Michael Haybig and Eric Wilkin. Our objective was to make a machine that could produce uh, this, which is just a little piece of uh, yttrium barium copper oxide superconductor. So, and, and it's in a filament so that we could we could use this machine to make uh, short wire links that we could later assemble into uh, larger uh, superconductor circuits. So, taking the enclosure off, it's already been taken loose, got the side already off. Wearing gloves, it'll cut my hands. It's mostly finished, but you never know. And uh, before, I, before I actually move the camera, we're running on an FPGA, so we've got two USB cables. We can uh, have an out and in for our laptop. And we've got an LCD screen. Emergency stop, it cuts power. We, we're running on 120 volt AC. So we can cut all that off if something goes wrong. These buttons uh, help us set the, the powder pressure that we're actually putting down into the die. The ramping and falling temperature over time for our uh, centering routine and also the hold time at different temperatures. These lights we had to show us when uh, certain actuators were powered and in, and in which direction. So now that we've got the exterior, let me move down here and show you the interior. So, let's scoot up a little bit. You see here, our frame that we've used to mount this. And this is our main actuator. And we're using an actuator instead of a hydraulic press because hydraulic presses, if we wanted to get something that was <clears throat> uh, electrically operated, we'd have had, we, we would have had to pay a lot more money. So being on a budget, we went with a one ton actuator, it's the biggest we could get for the money. And we've built this assembly that goes on the front of it. We've got this bit. We've got two different types of bits. And I'm going to pull this off so I can show you uh, what we're dealing with. So we've got two different kinds of bits and the one that we have on here right now is the self-centering bit. We've got another assembly that we can put in here with a different bit on it and uh, try it for a different uh, type of die that uses a cartridge. But this is the basic one that we've got. And it, whenever material gets grinded, it comes down this uh, chute. And this has been bent out of the way. But it would, it would normally go down in there and then this would come down and press it. You see back there, there's a little round thing. This guy, right there. I can come around from this angle and put my finger on it. This thing. This is on an actuator and it slides up underneath it and it lines up with the bore on this die. So whenever this goes down, it'll push the powder down the bore and we can detect the pressure on that little uh, sensor which that it has a uh, internal resistor network we just look at the changing voltage on two nodes in that resistor network and uh, run that through a differential amplifier so 
whenever it reaches the pressure that we want, we know that the bore is full, and we can pull back our um, our carriage assembly with the with the pressure sensor on it, and then we can this thing that I pulled off has a little extraction assembly. Move the camera a bit. So this extraction assembly, we've got little guides to, to get it to line up, and this will come forward and we press down, and, and this little guy fits down on the hole and presses the powder up. That's it. So that part will be done whenever that happens. And oh, I've got it misaligned here. There we go. Now you see down here, there's a there's a gap. Well, the the little superconductor filament falls down in here, and we can just grab it. Whenever we grab it, we can move it to this. This is a miniaturized kiln that we've made out of a couple of fire bricks. The reasoning behind making this small kiln, we already had taken up a lot of space with the other stuff, so why not save some space and, and, uh, and use a 12 volt DC uh, supply instead of running off 120 volts and having a much larger um, displacement. So this is this is a type K thermocouple. We've got a uh, voltage follower looking at it. In retrospect, I probably would have done a non-inverting amplifier, but that's okay. You know, we were limited on time, so whatever. And got our little neochrome wire wrapped around here so that we can have our uh, 12 volts and 25 amps, so that's the most that the power supply will put out. So, maximizing the power taken there works out pretty well. And whenever we're done, uh, that's it. And we've got our little superconducting material. So, here are the electronic guts, and it looks like a rat's nest, and it, and it is. But uh, just to give you a rundown of what we've got in here, FPGA, two PCBs, power supply. Um, we, we're trying to put everything on one PCB, but it wasn't working out because the, the amount of power required by our, uh, by this guy, the kiln, the, there was so much current that it was burning up our traces so we made a whole separate PCB for the for the uh, kiln here so this is all done the whole shebang was done once we got from whenever we got funding it was about two and a half to three months and so with that in mind I think we've done fairly well. We had our our design laid out, roughly laid out before we started, and uh, designed it from the from the ground up. Got everything talking to each other and the machine works satisfactorily and so yeah, it's pretty good. At least to me anyway.